Okay, that will do it for Batman Arkham Origins. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, that was an awesome game. I really liked it a lot. Um, now I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about it. Kind of give a give a review of it, if you will. So, a lot of people were bagging on this game. They said, you know, this isn't as good, quote unquote, as the other ones. As Batman Arkham City, because Arkham City's the coolest one ever. And I really, I didn't like Arkham, Arkham uh, City. So, I, um... I tried so hard. Ah. So Joker's gonna start getting Harley. Alright, anyway, so, yeah, Joker be quiet. So, I like this one because it, it moved a lot quicker. And everybody's like, oh, there's not as much to do in the city. That doesn't matter. The game is great. There was, yeah, okay, Joker, we get it. So, um, so... Really, Joker? Okay, we get it. So... Oh, my heck. Alright, well, anyway, so then, um... Here. Okay, anyway, so... Um, I really like the story in this because it was the origins. Like, this was... It was similar to Arkham Origins, where it took place over a night, and I mean, I guess that's what Arkham City did, but the story in Arkham City just didn't do it for me. Batman gets infected, and then he, um, has to find an antidote, all that weird stuff, and then it seemed like in Arkham City, like, this was cool because you have a really strong, um, for, uh, Protagonist? Is that what it is? The uh, bad guy. Because you have, like, the black mask. And then all of a sudden you realize it's the Joker. And it's cool. Because you're trying to figure out who the Joker is. Spoiler alert. Um, whereas in Arkham City, you think that Hugo Strange is, like, this bad guy. And, oh, he knows Bruce Wayne's identity. And then he really just turns out to be just kind of, like, wimpy. So, and the ending of Arkham City was lame. Joker dies. Spoiler. But I don't know. I don't think he did. Nobody ever dies in comic stories. Come on. Nobody ever does. Our next guest, political strategist Dean Snyder, has been following tonight's events since the start, more than eight hours ago. Dr. Snyder, let's start with you. What's your view? Well, Jack, it's a travesty. The ultimate failing of the justice system. A vigilante cleaning up our streets after countless deaths and bombings? What has happened to our police force? But what about James Gordon? He didn't exactly prove himself tonight. Hold on a minute, Dean. Now, I'm no defender of the GCPD or Captain Gordon for that matter. Like you said, tonight's debacle is some reflection of his efficacy. But I can't see any police force in any municipality doing a substantially better job against criminals like this Joker character or any of the hired killers he's brought into town. I mean, these guys are a different breed. We've yeah, exactly. Like this. So for me, it's less a reflection on Gotham's cops and more of a reflection on the state of our country. A country where our mental health and education systems are so warped and broken that we produce criminals of this nature. They're super villains. But what I'm wondering is what we'll do next. No, it's not an interview. Oh. Point. It's just plain wrong. They're both wrong. This isn't about the police or the Batman. It isn't about the state of our nation somehow churning out a dangerous new batch of the criminally deranged. It's about the failing of one single oh. institution. Oh. An institution which, in my view, represents the biggest threat to Gotham and its citizens. A time bomb. 
Oh, uh, he's going to create the Arkham it's Asylum. Taught us anything. It's that Blackgate is not the place to be housing our city's most dangerous offenders. Not one, but two prison breaks in the same night. All of tonight's tragedies would have been avoided if Gotham had a proper treatment facility for its top echelon offenders. A place with impenetrable security, where the most dangerous could be isolated, rehabilitated, and treated for their illness. A place like Arkham oh. Asylum. Oh. And after what happened tonight, I promise the good people of Gotham that I will work tirelessly. I will lobby the city council, go to the governor if I have to, do everything in my power to get Arkham reopened. reopened. So we can all sleep a little Why was it closed? Here. There you have it. Quincy Sharp placing the blame for tonight's events not on the Batman, not on the Joker, but on Blackgate Prison. And pledging to return Arkham Asylum to full operations. We'll be back with hmm. more from Mr. Sharp and our other guests when the Jack Ryder Hour continues after this message. I will have you know that it does get reactivated. So, I did like Arkham Asylum better than Arkham City. And this one, eh, I mean, Arkham Asylum still has a special place in everyone's heart. Uh, it's just, I'm not really an open world kind of guy. And I'm good to just go... And that's why this was a little more linear, and that's why I did like it a little more than the um, than Arkham Asylum, or than Arkham City. Oh, and there's the um, the team. That's a lot of people. That's a ton of people. Well, good job, guys. You did a good game. <laughs> so I liked how you have all the the tools, and that was good. Uh, you know, just, it was cool, the Batcave, you could see him building the Batmobile, all that good stuff. It is a little dark and dreary, not gonna lie, if you're in the mood for happy fun, oh, like, bright color world, this is not your game. But I'm sure, five bucks says we're gonna see a Batman game on the next gen systems. There's no way they're not gonna put them on there. So... That will definitely be in the cards. I'm 90% sure. And, uh... Yeah, what else? Bat... The Batwing was awesome. The fights were good. The boss battles were pretty cool. And the different locations were cool. I did like how the story slowly unfolded. That was pretty cool. You're just you're trying to figure out everything that's going on. And, like, the the um different uh investigation scenes and trying to uncover them that kind of showed a little more of the um batman uh detective what he does as a detective and it was cool how his suit kept getting ripped apart slowly little by little some of the boss battles were a little bit weird just it's i don't know if this kind of um control scheme really works well for kind of an uh, an arena boss battle it seems like the controls are a little too limiting for that kind of a thing um the firefly fight was was pretty awesome i really liked that that was done well just because it was more ranged because when you have when you have a system a combo system built on multiple enemies it's hard to create a boss battle with just one big enemy and still keep it kind of interesting because the the combo system is meant to go from guy to guy and you're supposed to be hopping around to different guys and doing different moves so if you only have one guy and that was similar in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City to an extent where you're kind of limited on what you can do so it was cool because I did find, I mean, and there's way more things to do. I just kind of burn through games. I don't really do the side quests or things. Uh, but they did get me with the Mad Hatter. That was a complete side quest where he hypnotizes you and goes to a different level. So that's really cool. And I'm sure there was many other things to do, like looking for the penguins, um, uh, the penguins, um, what was it? smuggle like his weapons smuggling weapons in and stuff i 
there like I liked most of this game because there were a few things in Arkham City that I really didn't like. I did not like Okay, first off, I didn't like how when you tried to get into a building, it was like a uh, a puzzle. So in Arkham City, you try to get into a, a building and you don't know where to where to get in. And it's frustrating and annoying. Whereas in this game, it's like, oh, there's the door. Okay, go into it. Like Arkham Asylum, there's the door. You go into the door. And, I mean, I it is easier just because playing these games after the third iteration, you do know where to go. You know that, oh, I'm in a room. Where's the vent? I need to use my thing, my bat claw, to pull it down. So, I mean, I guess it is, we're more accustomed to that in that way. Whereas when it's a new game and you're still trying to learn the mechanics of it, you're like, well, what, what do I do? How do I progress? I'm stuck. So just learning the rules of the game, I guess, is really the most important part. And then you kind of get used to them. But I was fine. I was totally fine with it being more of the same. It's more Batman. I love the first two games. Why not the third game? There, and I, like I don't know because people are like, "Oh, there's something missing. There's something missing in this game." Well, I didn't feel anything special for Arkham City. <laughs> I did feel something special for Arkham Asylum just because it's awesome. But Arkham City, I just felt like it was more of the same. And everybody will be like, nah, uh there's an open world, and you can do so much stuff. You can answer the telephone. You can answer payphones, and they talk to you. Well, yeah, that's great, but I don't do that. I just play the main mission. That's why I liked Arkham Asylum. Just go for the main mission, you do your thing. And in this one, sure, there's extra stuff. You can unlock those towers and get Enigma and, you know, Mr. Riddler... Mr. E is in it a lot more than in Arkham Asylum. Or even, well, in Arkham City, didn't he have those weird, crazy things where he had to save the people? Something like that. So, he was in there kind of, somewhatly. And, uh... This one... Like, I remember in Arkham City, you could kind of fly, kind of like the uh, the cape on Mario, or on Super Mario World, where you can kind of go down and fly up and go down and fly up. I think you probably could do that in this one. I remember kind of being able to do it in Arkham City, and I didn't really feel like I could do it very well in this one. Maybe I just needed more practice. So flying around the city, it was a little bit cumbersome, just trying to grab onto things. Uh, the city was cool, big and open. But, you know, like everybody's complaining about, there's not a lot to do in there. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Okay, so go to the big green exclamation point and continue the story. I don't know. I just, I don't do side things in games. I just, I go through the story and then we're done. That's how it is. So, uh, yeah, what else? These credits are really, really long. They just keep going and going. Oh, the bad guys were awesome in this. That was so cool. I really liked how they had a bunch more bad guys. Because Arkham Asylum was okay. I mean, the main guy was the Joker. And then you had, you know, Poison Ivy, whatever. But... In this one, there was a lot more random people that you don't really know who they are, but they're really cool. And it was funny because Copperhead, was that her name, is really a guy in the comics. And then they were like, oh, um, this should be a guy. I guess it's a girl. That's pretty funny. And she was a psycho. And uh, Firefly was pretty cool. Who were those? Were those all the assassins? Were there like eight of them? I swear they they said there were eight of them. They said there were eight of them, and then um, did we go through all of them? Because it was pretty cool at the beginning when it um, showed them all, and then you're like, "Oh, Black Mask is the bad guy of this game." Just kidding, and that's the thing. Like it was a cool twist. Whereas, spoiler alert, in Arkham City. When you think that 
Hugo Strange is the bad guy, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh, just kidding, it's Ra's al Ghul, and I was like, yeah, duh, of course it is, no surprise, and I mean, obviously this one, you're like, oh, well, duh, yeah, of course it's the Joker, because it's the Joker, but at the same time, like, that was surprising, because you're like, oh, it's like, where's the Joker gonna come from, and he appeared, and it was a good reveal. It was awesome. You're like, oh, there he is. And then Batman's like, who's this Joker guy? And then it was cool how you see kind of the dynamic grow between... You know, like, basically, you see why the Joker is so psycho and obsessed with um, Batman. You see that Batman saves his life, and the Joker's like, what the crap? And then that was really cool, the part where... You kind of, you play as the Joker and kind of get his ideas. And then you kind of see um, Harley Quinn kind of getting the hots for him. Kind of being like, oh, he's just the bad boy that needs someone to take care of him. And you kind of see the dynamic grow. It was interesting. I thought we would have seen the origins of Harley as well. And actually, fun fact, my friends, Harley did not start out in the comics, didn't she? Yeah, I don't think she did. She started out in, like, the cartoon or something. And then she was so cool that then they brought her in, like, as actual part of the Batman origins. Or not origins, the Batman, like, canon, the actual story. So she, I don't think she was a real, an original comic character. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. I'd look it up right now, but, um... Well, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there really wasn't a lot of getting stuck in this game. A lot of times, some games will be like, oh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stump you. I'm gonna make you not know what to do. Because you're not supposed to know how to get past this part. Because it's supposed to be hard. So, I mean, it was simple in that aspect. It's like, okay, I'm stuck. Which weapon do I need? It was funny how he used each bad guy. He's like, oh, here's a tool from the bad guy. And I'm going to hook it onto my armor. My suit. Just like Mega Man. Then he hooks it on. Cha-ching! So that was cool. Those gloves, man. Those shot gloves will destroy. The pure destruction. Can I make these credits go faster? No, I can't. They're moving so slow. How do you make the credits go? It's funny because they're like, hey, you can push back. To get rid of the credits. I'm like, no, I want to get through the credits. But... Because that's the part of the game. Look, here's the deal. You go through the whole game. Watching the credits... Is part of the victory. You beat the game. So you watch those credits. It doesn't make sense if they put them in the, the first menu. Because it's like, well... I didn't beat the game. Why do I watch the credits if I didn't beat the game? Here, come on, hurry up. Hurry up. All right, well, I am I think that's about it. So thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe, and uh, we can keep you up on the latest videos because there's going to be plenty more videos coming your way constantly, daily. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below, and uh, we'll see you around. So thanks for watching. I really enjoy Batman Arkham Origins. And we'll catch you on the next Let's Play video.